Hello! This is the hundredth episode of the One Episode Rule, a podcast about first impressions. I'm Magpie, and there's no jokes this time, because I thought it was Monday. And it's not Monday, it's Tuesday. And what did I, what did I do, Monday? Monday is gone. Monday left us. We, I meant, we were not, we're not allowed to have Monday this. this I week. meant to do yeah. things before Monday this podcast that I didn't Monday. do. <laughs> For instance, I meant to start watching Higurashi Go. Not Go or Kai. Kai, it's Kai. One I of meant them. to do I meant to do Kai because I thought it would be a good like greatest hits things thing to do for the hundredth episode, but I didn't do that. Now fucking did I <laughs> <laughs> They sneak up on you. They do. I've lost time. <laughs> also, is Higurashi go like Teen Titans go? Yeah. No. That's no. A, that's exactly Identical. what it's like. Yeah, they, they all develop like giant heads. They um <laughs> They make really? the jokes a lot. They dumb the jokes down, and uh, there's more <laughs> toilet humor. God. Less, less dismemberments. I've never seen Teen Titans go. I don't know what it's like. That's how it goes, right? Yeah, basically. I don't know. I couldn't say. I I don't think I've ever really even seen the original Teen Titans. So yeah, it wasn't really on TV mm, yeah. whenever I was a kid. So uh, anyway, do you two want to like introduce yourself? Oh well, yeah, I'm you... Blackle. I'm Blackle. I'm a person, uh, allegedly. Um, and uh, my news for this week is that I watched all of last week's anime. Well, not all of. I mean, only the first season, because apparently there's a second season. There is a second season. Not that I really know what they're going to do, but um, I did Tell watch this the first it. season, and it did make me cry a lot, but I do think okay. it's a flawed anime. Like, <laughs> Well, sure. most media isn't perfect. <laughs> no, but... This one was like not egregious, but like it almost like wears its flaws on its sleeve in a weird <laughs> way. I don't know. There was a there was a mild plot hole, and oh. they just sort of lampshaded it. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, okay, whatever, I guess. But the, and it's the the part that made me cry. What wasn't even the ultimate episode? It was like three episodes before the ultimate episode. And I'm like, why couldn't this have been the like the the finale? Like this hmm. would have been suitable as it. But anyway. It, anyway, it was it good. Sound, it sounds like it was good. It elicited emotions. It did elicit emotions, which I was primed for, actually. But <laughs> it still elicited those emotions. Jojo, you're also on the podcast. Hi, Apparently. I'm Joey. And uh, I, I, I've forgotten what anime is. Oh, good. <laughs> I don't... <laughs> I meant to read JoJo's this week and I, didn't get around to I it. I try so hard to forget what anime is. <laughs> Fresh start. Uh, I read so. I I read a comic this week, um, and it was unrelated at all to anime. I got some. I got some good stuff. <laughs> good lord. <laughs> Pretend that didn't happen. We'll just leave that in. That'll be fine. <laughs> no, please. Anyway, would you like me to remind you what anime is? Yes, please. Yes, I, please I tell some, me. I have some. I have some news items. Okay. That are related to some of the t the topics the podcast addresses uh, regularly over our hundred episodes. Well, but they're also timely, so let's start. Um, French President Emmanuel Macron. That's not right. It's Macron. <laughs> Macron. Macron. It's not Macron. It's it's Macron. Um, anyway, he's revealed a side of himself nobody was aware of, and that he's apparently a huge fucking weeaboo, well, and has right. been catered to by uh, by. Ichiro Oda, who sent him a custom One Piece print. <gasps> yes! <laughs> oh my god. France ruled by a One Piece Stan! France Hell ruled yes. by a One Piece Stan. You gotta find out who his favorite is. <laughs> Fa France ruled by a One Piece Stan sounds like the title of a light novel. It'll, it'll, I mean, it'll it determine light. it'll determine like, like, what kind of, like, Pervert he is, which is his favorite. Which is his favorite say, one piece? If I do, I do, I do have a distinct fear that the character 
that he enjoys is the one that is often described as French, which is Sanji, mm. <laughs> which is the huge scary pervert man. But uh oh, <laughs> he's not the hugest scary pervert man. I mean, there's Frankie. This is true. <laughs> Frankie is a different breed of pervert, is the thing. Um, different uh, brand. Is he just described as French because he's a chef? Um, I think that he's supposed to like look vaguely fr- French, or I don't. I literally don't know. Uh, Oda has once said that if if all the characters were nationalities, like that correlated with Earth nationalities, he did assign for uh. Assign, assigned French. Assigned French. <laughs> I, I, I that's because I guess because he's a chef and womanizing yeah. Lothario. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Going good there. Anyway, let's <laughs> let's move on. Um, mm-hmm. Our our old friend Junji Ito uh, win won big at the Eisner Awards. Ooh. Winning two separate awards for two of his manga for nice. uh, Remina and uh, Venus in the Blind Spot. Hmm. Very cool. Yeah. Which is, you know, it's rad. It's good to see that weird little guy get his get his <laughs> recognition. <laughs> Do you think he cares? Do you think he? Cares? He's oh, just I think like, he cares. He's just like, oh, okay, I'll put these on the shelf with the others. Um. He's just teasing his cat with one of them. (laughs) I know that I know that my friend gave him in person a a little gift, and he was very happy about that. So I think he does like getting these kinds of things. Well, that's an entire that's that's an entirely different thing. Like getting getting an award, you may be like hot or cold on, depending on whether you care about the people who give out that award. But getting something from a fan is different. Right, especially That's fair. something like super rad. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of super rad uh, handicrafts, uh, mm-hmm. can can you guess the kind of bit we're gonna get into? No. Are we gonna? Um, is yeah. Give us give us a guess. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about <laughs> embroidery. <laughs> um, no, I'm afraid I- not. <laughs> I, I, did, I did want to say that every single time we have the news section, um, yeah. I do feel like I'm dry. I'm, I'm driving by blindfolded through the podcast, so because I, I don't know what's going to happen next. You don't know what's next. <laughs> Never. You, you just, just you just got to savor the anticipation. <laughs> with and you can do that with the with our newest piece of uh, of Ava merchandise. Um, a pair of. Uh, of uh, plastic crayfish painted in the colors of units one and two. <laughs> the, they are models and you can assemble them yourself. <laughs> of fucking course. This is Which, like, if this was any other like anime merchandise, it'd be like, what the fuck? But the fact this is Ava merchandise, I'm just like, well, this is just them. in the fucking like tradition of weird ass Ava merchandise. So like, why oh, am I so yeah. <laughs> Giant. These are good. Wow, these are amazing. They're really lo- cute, actually. I love them. I want one. Weird to note that they're also uh, apparently American crayfish and not the Japanese variety. Oh my! <laughs> well, they That's gotta funny. get the, they get the, get their audience. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of a particular type of uh, Gundam or hmm. mobile suit because <laughs> it looks like the first one looks like the Zagok because it has claws. <laughs> Yeah. That's all I have. They're <laughs> the crayfish. <laughs> cool. Um, and one last bit of a uh, bit of news. Strange to hear it. Uh, this actually means something to me, but probably not to to y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a while, people have just sort of been like, "Hey, whatever happened to Black Lagoon?" I watched it. I watched most of the original anime. I hear there's a set of OVAs that are pretty cool, and I was just like, "Didn't that just kind of peter out? They just I kind of kind of stopped being able to find episodes of it." Uh, and yeah, it's turned out that uh, the manga side of things, uh, since 2010, there's only been two new volumes. And somebody directly asked the author about it, and. Uh, 
I feel like this is like brave in Japanese culture. It's just re- he just replied with, "My depression is so bad that I can't work on it as much as I like." Oh, wow! And I I really do appreciate the uh, the honesty of this, and mm-hmm. I I wanted to, you know, they'll never hear this, but I did want to signal like support for um, for Ray uh, Hiroe. Mm-hmm. Just keep just keep on keeping on because yeah. I know what it feels like to go through it. <laughs> yeah. And he says that he's doing his best to move forward with it without rushing. Well, that's good. And I hope one day that we'll eventually get to see the uh, the rest of this cool series about a Japanese salary man being stuck on a boat full of uh, full of crazy people running packages across the South China Sea in the uh, 90s. <laughs> Black Lagoon's really good, guys. Parts of it are really rough because it deals with some really nasty characters. But mm. <laughs> they do a lot of work. They end up doing a lot of work for like the Russian mob. <laughs> uh. But uh, really cool series. I I hope things work out uh, good for Heroic Sam. Yeah. Well, on that note. <laughs> <laughs> I probably didn't even say his name cor- correctly. I'm I miss Emma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, 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 since it's our hundredth episode, I decided I would pick something. Oh boy! I, I decided it was time to pick something special. <sighs> so, uh, so I think for our hundredth episode, we're going to watch Bucky the Grappler. Yes! I knew it. I fucking knew it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I listen. I know we've never considered it before. <laughs> we no don't. I don't, I don't want it. Either. I don't want it to come as a shock. <laughs> no, we've never thought about this anime, not even once. Please, um, please, uh-huh. please sit down. It's okay. <laughs> It'll be safe. It'll be okay. <laughs> At least then, after I watch this, I'll be able to watch the uh, Baki the Grappler. I thought it was a boys' love show. Drew it up. Yeah, You'll be true. educated. Yeah. You'll be ready. So, uh, what do you guys think of the uh, prequel to Beastars? <laughs> I, Pardon? I, I never seen Beastars. Did you not, so I can't... Uh, did you not know that? Did you not know that uh, Paru Itagaki, I, I believe her name is, is the daughter oh, right. of the Itagaki oh. who who uh, makes Baki. Oh, Fuck. I completely forgot about that. <laughs> oh my I don't God. know how you could expect me to know this. We talked about it on this show before. We like have. three times. Um, anyway, I'm starting to think that this isn't a boys love anime. <laughs> I don't know. I could see it. I don't know. It could turn around. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Um, I'm, I'm going to Tokyo to get some. <laughs> we gotta go to yeah. Tokyo. I'm gonna post I... this. Blurb. If I could describe this show so far, it's literally just um, that one scene in Silence of the Lambs just four, four or five times. Four like, the, it yeah, different times. It's pretty cool. I, I, I want to discuss that, but first we got to hit this blurb. Yeah, okay. After emerging victorious from a brutal underground tournament, Mbaki Han, Mbaki Hanma continues on his path to defeat his father, you, Yujiro. Yujiro, the strongest man in the world. However, he gets no time to rest when the tournament runner, Tokugawa Mitsunari, visits him at school. He reveals to Baki that five incredibly dangerous death row inmates from around the world, all skilled in martial arts, have simultaneously escaped confinement and are heading to Tokyo, each wishing to finally know the taste of defeat. Tokugawa warns that due to his well-known strength, Baki is bound to encounter them sooner or later, and he will not be their only target. Adapting the first saga of the second manga series, Baki centers on 
the all-out war between the esteemed martial artists of Japan and those of the dark underground world. So this should be, <sighs> I should mention some history here. There was an anime of the first series of Baki, but it was produced in 2001 and barely has anything to do with the modern Baki, which everybody knows. Ah, it, right. It's him as a as a small child fighting gorillas and shit in the woods. Huh. <laughs> That's funny. So, so this is why this show felt like a sequel, even though it it like, technically slightly is. Baki is a yeah. teenager here and has uh, has quite a bit under his belt, including the before mentioned tournament that he got that arm injury from, which they didn't even show. They did not show Nor because it is they... part of. The first series. <laughs> Nor did they mention his father at all in this until the, the blurb. Like There was uh, a moment where a character called Garland is killed and like they're like he's like, Oh no, not Garland. And I'm like, am I supposed to know who that is? <laughs> Garland for uh, you're supposed to take some stuff on faith just because this yeah. is a new series. Garland yeah. is basically just a Russian like Olympic wrestling hero, as I far see, as I yeah. know. <laughs> Which is why Skiorsky, a man who has decided to no longer follow the rules of wrestling, was able to turn him into a pretzel. <laughs> yeah. Crunched his body all up. Yeah. So, so yeah, as previously mentioned, the, ba the basic rundown of this episode is Baki Hanma is at school, and he's, and he's subconsciously scaring the shit out of everyone within a 50-foot <laughs> <laughs> radius around him. Yeah. He has a he has a big uh, stank aura. Because he's because he has a JoJo stand aura. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. Get that 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 stank. Which led me to something great. Uh, the uh, the only note I took during this because I was paying rapt attention was that delinquents can <laughs> delinquents can naturally judge fighting ability in an instant. <laughs> uh, just like all, so do all do all bonchos do all. Yeah. All punk, street punks just have the psychic ability to read somebody's fighting stats. I I did have one note uh, for the longest time um, until we got to the killers, which was it, just the word delinquency eugenics. <laughs> it's true. Baki <laughs> has. Well, you know, if we watched the whole series, which we won't because that's not our pur pur purview, you would learn why Baki is like this. Specifically because of the man that he has descended from, Yujiro. Uh, <laughs> mm. who, is big, who is approaching, like, uh, cars from JoJo levels of physical perfection. <laughs> <laughs> the United yeah. States military is afraid of Yujiro. <laughs> All of it. <laughs> oh my thing. god. I mean, considering what these, like, fucked up little dinky murder men did, I could understand that... Yujiro's father, Baki's grandfather, if I remember correctly, fought in World War II on, like, Guadalcanal or something, and in, like, a fictional battle in Guadalcanal, in which he fucking threw soldiers at each other and exploded them. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> With his bare hands. Baki, Baki is some nonsense. Baki. I like... That's what I, like, kind of enjoyed about this episode, is, like, they didn't even, like, get into any kind of pretenses. They just got, they were like, we know what you're here for, you fucking garbage. Come yeah, get there's no, there's no like pretense of normalcy here. Mm -hmm. Which I appreciate. But let's, let's get into a quick rundown. So the viewer know, who isn't uh, familiar with Baki knows what we watched. So <laughs> Baki Hama is at school. Um, he's doing all right. Scares the local delinquents with his aura. <laughs> he scares and all they, of his classmates too. Like he's asleep in the back of the class, <laughs> and everyone in the whole room is like trembling with fear. And his fucking his fucking demon energy is causing everyone else in the room to tremble. <laughs> yep. uh, but I uh, and yeah, they know better than to fight him. Which great subversion for an anime that that never happens. Mm -hmm, it's always the delinquents true. being used as a as like an indicator of the protagonist's power, but if Baki hit them, they would explode. They would <laughs> turn into paste. They would turn into mist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so he gets called in 
uh, he gets called into the principal's office because Tokugawa Mitsunari would like to meet with him. Tokugawa Mitsunari is a very rich man, uh, the 11th head of the Tokugawa clan, um, <laughs> which doesn't have as much significance now as it used to. Um, <laughs> and uh, is a fight promoter, basically. <laughs> Yes. Of the most violent and powerful martial artist known to man. And mm -hmm. he has come to inform B Baki through a very strange metaphor about the discovery of gl of crystallized gl glycerin, which I looked up and could not determine whether it was real or not. <laughs> um, I, I thought the implication was he was just like, look, this shit's not supposed to happen. It just happened to every single, like, bunch of glycerin in the world reality's the crumbling you're gonna have to fight some guys <laughs> yeah but uh anyway he sits there and tells him about these five motherfuckers let's discuss the motherfucker <laughs> yes. yes so <laughs> as blackle free. said this is this is the scene from the silence of the lambs repeated over and over again yes it's so yeah good. our first silence of the lambs <laughs> is a man imprisoned in Tacoma Tacoma prison in Washington off the shore and his name is Dorian. <laughs> mm -hmm. Dorian's first feat will be to survive his execution by hanging, which I don't believe they actually do in the United States prisons except by request anymore. I was yeah. going to literally say I've, I wrote down what time period is this supposed to take place because they hanged someone in America they electric chaired someone in England, I believe. Scotland. Mm -hmm. uh, Was it Scotland? Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, so this should have, I, I guess they, they would have been, Hidegaki would have been writing this in the 80s and 90s. I feel like hanging was abolished you... way before that. <laughs> True enough, but there are certain states in which you can request your own method of execution with certain is, options on the table. Usually hanging is one of them. This is fair, but also there was like a very like specific like procedure that the doctor had to like follow. Like they had to hang him for like 10 minutes to make sure he was good and dead. Mm -hmm. And um, if, well, they didn't if, even do it right because it didn't break his neck. <laughs> no, <laughs> they did it bad, but um, that's another discussion. But my point being that, like, it seemed the implication was that, like, this well, is all, something also, that they do a lot. Well, also, these are all, like, mega prisoners. So this might be, like, a completely unique circumstance for Dorian. True. This might be like, okay, this is a monster instead of a human being. We're going to... To destroy this man, and they they didn't do that. <laughs> of all the prisoners, I've seen a little bit not uh, not of any of the shows, but I've seen a little bit of dialogue and manga pages. Mm -hmm. uh, of all the prisoners, I do think Dorian is my favorite, even though he is an ir irredeemable monster. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fair enough. But he does he does it with a certain panache. <laughs> <laughs> um. Let's see. Who else do we have? The second one was the guy the from. One was the guy uh, from Scotland who they uh, he was, uh, cheered. I have their names. Hang on. Um, the second guy is, uh, Doyle. Doyle. Oh yeah. So they rewind the clock. Go to Scotland with a cross-eyed prison guard, about to execute Doyle uh, by electric chair. Mm -hmm. They have a and, long conversation. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, yeah, and then, like, they, they shock him. And then uh, they finish shocking him, and he's like, he looks dead. He's, his eyes have bled out. And mm -hmm. um, <laughs> then he just explodes his chair and teleports behind two guys. <laughs> it's it's true. He does a Sasuke. Um, he does a nothing personnel kid, so... Uh, and he does smash their heads together, and without taking off the cap or blindfold, instructs <laughs> this guard to go ahead and use his gun, mm -hmm. because it's the only thing that separates man from beast. Uh huh. <laughs> my my note for this scene is that they did like extra bad with this execution because, um. As far as I'm aware, you're supposed to like completely shave their hair when you. Yeah, you are supposed that. to shave their head. 
to make he sure still that still had all his hair and and put a bunch of goo on there for uh, mm-hmm. for the, conduction uh, for conduction. Otherwise, they people tend to catch fire. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh. But yeah, they didn't do that. And also, usually you throw a switch for it instead of pushing a mm-hmm. button. But um, but I guess that Agaki just doesn't know how people get electrocuted. <laughs> oh, Interesting yeah. note, though, there have been surpri- a surprising amount of people who have just straight up survived the electric chair. Really? Yeah. I think if you survive the electric chair, they shouldn't they get should you, give you, you a second shot. But they kept trying to kill these dudes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There I mean, the guy... thing is, is that, like, electricity, most, most of the time, electricity murders you because, like, it makes your heart stop. But, mm-hmm. like, if you, there's a chance that it doesn't create the yeah. circuit between your heart and your, and whatever, and cause, like, your heart could still be pumping, and it could just be the electricity's going through a different part of your body. Right, yeah. right, right. There was a guy in, uh, in uh, a Louisiana state prison who survived it, like, three times. I, they should have let him go. They they should have let him, he he obviously won, but uh, no, he just kept he went back to his cell complaining that everything tasted like peanut butter. Oh my god! <laughs> what the fuck? Um, oh man! I do think they eventually managed to fry that guy, but geez, like, finally, Jesus. <laughs> okay, so yeah, Doyle does that and uh, just leaves. He just leaves prison. Yeah, we should note that all these dudes just leave prison. Doesn't he like hire a guy to fly him to Tokyo too? Like, yeah, he he sent a letter. He, like, <laughs> he sent a letter before his execution. He's just like, I'm going to be needing to go to Japan. Give me a moment to get out of prison. <laughs> yeah, yep. and he's like, Oh, you're on time too. Uh, he seems weirdly chill, just in yeah. general. Mm-hmm. Dorian just climbed out of prison and appears to have. I don't know if the implication that he was swimming to shore or if he was swimming across the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> I thought I it was, swimming, was swimming across, across, the, Pacific across Ocean. the Pacific Ocean. I think yeah. that that's funnier too. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, yeah. Who's who's our next guy? Our next guy is. Uh, I think it's the Russian. Skiorsky. Yep. Yeah, they don't. They don't really go into how Skiorsky gets out other than he probably climbed out of a nuclear missile silo from a, a, a base a that had been converted into a prison and then yeah. walked through the Siberian winter to kill a rival and then go to Tokyo. He's like, hold well, on, I... before I go to Tokyo, I do gotta destroy a person. I and I think that like, he, he like drew out I'm going to Tokyo on the wall in snow, but it did look like a different type of white thing. Yeah. They all leave this message. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Our next one, I think, was Spec. Yes. Uh, Spec, our Florida man. Florida representation. Mm -hmm. Oh, is Spec from Florida? Did you look it up or something? Cool. No, I think that it said that at, like, the end of his clip. And I was like, Yeah! Florida man. Florida so, man. Y'all know who I'm cheering man. for. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, Speck has a, a very Silence of the Lambs intro, almost identical, except when the guy, uh, the guard, uh, impresses upon this counselor uh, how he cannot bring any metal into the room because the last guy got his fucking head caved in with one punch mm-hmm. uh, because mm-hmm. Speck grabbed him through the food slot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so he he fucking takes every bit of metal off of his suit and takes his belt off and has to hold up his pants with his hands. Walks all the way down there, drops his pants because Speck just isn't in his cell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. He's above him in a vent and he does just fucking pull him into the ceiling and pull out one of his gold teeth. One of his gold teeth? <laughs> God. What was that all about? I think uh, he needs a piece of metal to like open the lock to leave the submarine that he's in. Yeah, yeah, he needed to jam it into the fucking hatch so that he could open the submarine and swim to the surface. (laughs) Because his prison was 200 meters below water. Yeah, they're like, he's, we're so far underwater. He's, there, there's no way he's going to make it to the surface. Not only did he make it to the surface, but while still holding his breath, he killed the guards that were in the like lighthouse on the shore. <laughs> he just uh, murdered a bunch of people and then sat down for a smoke. <laughs> yep. Uh, and our last guy, uh, our our last guy, 
a seemingly normal uh, Japanese man mm-hmm. uh, in a another Silence of the Lamb nod in a big cube mm-hmm. in the middle of a room oh, made out crazy. of uh, made out of military grade uh, ballistic glass that could survive uh, a, a, a fucking rocket a, a rocket rocket mi- missile. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yes, yeah, sitting there wearing a fucking fundoshi <laughs> <laughs> and drawing his message in calligraphy. Yeah, they stand there talking about how he somehow murdered people with gas. <laughs> he proceeds to just do some wizard shit. He yeah, does guess... some wizard shit. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Class, and he's like. I'm just going to create a suction cup here. I'm just going to create a small vacuum. I think this is technically possible, but I don't think you can do it with your hand. Yeah. True, but also he's... Yeah, but he's a Baki character, so... Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. This episode... This episode is incredible for telling you exactly what you're getting into. <laughs> yeah. Because by this point, nobody's surprised that he can do this. Nope. But yeah, he does just break the glass calmly. Uh, tell the guy that he could sh- he can go ahead and shoot him. Oh wait, did you take the safety off? Fucking like Spock. He Spock chops one of the dudes, and then completing a sentence he said earlier, where he said, "Do you know what the most po- most poisonous gas on Earth is?" He fucking blows into this dude's ear and just blows his brains right out the other side of his head. Like a, like a really like a gun. balloon or... I'm not sure that's how that would work. but I don't I'm think that no would expert. work like that. It looked like intestines. It was yeah, the most yeah, violent thing we'd seen the whole show. <laughs> it's like... And every, and every time they cut back to Baki and he's just like, oh, that sounds serious. <laughs> wow. I oh, like oh, how I, I like how the idea that it is it his intestines which came out of his ear. Those aren't brains; those are intestines. Yeah, those are he intestines. Blew so hard that you blew so hard went down and up. upwards. Oh, yeah. you ever have somebody give you a wet belly? <laughs> <laughs> Awful! Oh my god! He didn't so answer that's... the question though. Like, what is the most deadliest gas? Well, he said this one, and then his he blew his brains out. <laughs> His breath is the deadliest gas, apparently. I think the I think the implication is that it's oxygen. <laughs> yeah, I guess. Or nitrogen, because nitrogen is the most. It, it could be nitrogen, Black. Oh, you're right. Or yeah. whatever you breathe <laughs> out. Carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Yes. yes. So, so, uh, so yeah, and then it cuts back to Baki, and he's just like, "That sounds like a real problem." <laughs> <laughs> Well, because they're all coming, they're all coming to Japan to fight Baki and presumably other people, but yeah, but mostly Baki because I'm sure they've heard of Yujiro. Yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and yeah, this is the introduction to the prison arc, the prisoner arc, which I thought I, thankfully, I didn't spoil for myself. I thought Baki would somehow end up in prison, and that's how this would work. But no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But no, the pr- prison came to is coming to him. <laughs> prison is on its way. God. So that's pretty simple. Uh, we should mention that the uh, the Baki style is well represented here. It's almost kaiji esque, just the sharpness, <laughs> like the the thickness of the black outlines. I kind of thought it was closer to JoJo's. Well, it's got it's got similarities to both in that it's kind of atypical. Uh, mm-hmm. People are really lumpy and b- bucky. <laughs> yeah, they're they very are. buff. There's also like some like very smooth airbrush shading stuff going on that I thought was fascinating because it yeah, felt that, like that's a nod to the manga. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, but it, like it felt like ve- it made it very like '80s comic style. I think mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Oh man. So yeah, what do we what do we think? I w- was kind of prepared for where this was gonna go, but I want to hear what you guys think. Um, no, this is this is par for the course. This is what exactly what I was expecting. Get it, right into the murder and it, destruction. It was very brisk. I kind of also was expecting that. Um, yeah. 
The way my, my roommate did tell me about the, the glycerin scene, but she didn't explain it very well. She said it, she talked about it very vaguely. So I was like, I was expecting it to not make any sense at all, but weirdly it did make a, sense, like a weird kind of sense to me. Yeah, no. Apparently that glycerin story is referred to in like a number of different pieces of media, but I found no like historical evidence of it. Peculiar. That's weird. It's bizarre. Huh. Did I just find a screenshot of him fighting a giant mantis? What is going on? <laughs> Par for the course. So, uh, uh, any other thought? Like, I, this is, I've got so few notes, y'all. Normally, like, I fill a whole, like, page with notes. I have, like, a tiny, most of it is just, like, what the fuck? What is going on? They're so buff. White <laughs> They're so lumpy. <laughs> Teleports behind you. That's pretty much it. Their face, why yeah. do their faces have so many muscles? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I have, I guess I have a note, which is, I it I didn't expect the first episode to be this strong for what back it is. But it's True. got sort of a, it lacks like pretentiousness in any way. It lacks like, a lot of isekai failed the fuck out of this test. Mm -hmm. Which is, Baki is here presenting its core thesis without it like, any wasted exposition time. All yeah. of the exposition is is scenes of what is actually happening right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's honestly, it is kind of intriguing, actually. It's kind yeah. of refreshing. Because, like, the, the whole, like, not a lot happens in this. It's just, like, five scenes of these fucked up prisoners escaping... And after the first one, you know what the fuck is going to happen. Even on the first one, if you have any familiarity with Becky, because, uh, like, I, I was watching them going to hang this guy, and I was like, oh, he's not going to be dead. Yeah, right? or even any familiarity with, like, well... So with the genre, life. I guess. Like tropes, yeah. I guess. Yes. Like, yeah. it, like, look at this Titanic man. There's no way that he's just going to die here. Yes, uh -huh. yes, yeah. yes, yes. And even so, it manages to make it like, like, all right, yeah, I see you, Baki, and I, <laughs> yes, I do kind of want to see you beat up these fucked up monster <laughs> men. Yes, I kind of do. <laughs> In the, like, like, most cheesy, violent, like, soup, hyper, like, gore. <laughs> <laughs> like, none of it's, like, realistic gore, but, like, that's, like, part of the charm. Yeah. Too. I don't. Like, <laughs> it's 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 so honest with like what it is uh -huh. that you have to you, even if like I don't know if this for instance I don't know if this is Blackles kind of thing, but you gotta like respect it, don't you? It knows yeah. exactly what the fuck it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> You're right to say it's not my kind of thing. I don't like battle anime. I know. I yeah. feel like every episode is just gonna be like the next guy. Or the next, sure. like, I, mean, like, I don't know. It just feels like it's going to be like that, and I'm not into that. But I I appreciate it, it wearing its heart on its sleeve. I think that's dope. Yeah. Well, it, it does at least tell you that it's not, that this season at least isn't going to be like that. Because there's only five guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And there's 12 episodes. <laughs> right. Hmm. So he's got to have to do more stuff. More stuff. More stuff. And also, like, all of them are going to have, like, different ways of fighting of, and stuff uh-huh being fucked up monster people yep <laughs> that's almost part of the like the intrigue of watching is because like okay we know he's gonna like fight all of them but like how how are they gonna how are these battles gonna go down and i i think it's fascinating mm -hmm. <laughs> that is to say i i would probably watch more of this honestly <laughs> I, I, I know something that makes me want to watch more of this. No, and don't tell the, me. well, no, it's just one thing. It's one character. Okay. I want to see Pickle. Pickle. Do you guys who? know who? Do you guys know who Pickle is? No. Pickle is another time that they up the stakes in Baki the Grappler. He is a Neanderthal man that was frozen in an iceberg. And they thaw him out to to try and get him to fight Baki. Holy shit! Pickle is an animal. Wow. He's incredible. 
You know what? what? I do fuck? feel like I have remember you talking about b- this before. Do you so, want like, me to get you a picture of Pickle? Yes. Show me Pickle. Show it. He also yeah. bites. That's his special ability. <laughs> okay, let's see. Let's find a, a good picture of Pickle. <laughs> I'm, I've got my head on my desk. I'm going to listen to Joey's reaction, and then I'm going to look at it. Then okay. you're going to look? Great. Yeah. I, I'm i right. prepared. Okay, you got to give me a second, though. i got to find it. All right. Well, how are we going to fill this time? How are you going to fill the air? <laughs> With a bunch of gas. <laughs> the most the dangerous most gas. The, the most, most dangerous, dangerous gas. gas. My breath. My hot air. <laughs> His hot, hot breath. I will blow your intestines out your ear. <laughs> God. I'm just going to show you a picture of Pickle's face. Okay. Let's see him. Because this is a strong panel. Mm-hmm. I, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm lifting my head to look. <laughs> That's not what I was expecting. <laughs> Look at his like, little face. Those, those lovely locks. I was gonna say those luxurious lips, though. Oh my god! Look at his like dainty little. Okay, imagine this character's head on like a a like curvy lady body. I can see that. And you see, riding a just... T-Rex. <laughs> It's riding a gigantic crocodile. Oh my god. But don't worry, I got your back. Uh, Blackle, if you want to see something like that. Wait, like what? I never said to be. This is tiny. I can't do anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. This is what I did. He's flipping a triceratops over. Oh my god. He is suplexing a ty- triceratops. Mm-hmm. I s- oh. <gasps> oh my god. Grabbing it by the horns and just absolutely obliterating this creature. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I love this character. This and I love the I fact think. that he exists. Look at his like fucked up like claw fingernails. He's a primeval man. <laughs> I like how this is so unreal because, like, humans weren't alive while dinosaurs were alive. Yes. Like... <laughs> <laughs> Except for Pickle. I just, I just Pickle he was dead. the only one. We can't call him a, a man, though. <laughs> God was like, God was like, I'm gonna test something out, and I'm gonna put some beta testing yeah. out here, and then that's what that's what killed the dinosaurs. It was just pickle. It was pickle. Like, ah, oh, man, I I gotta put this one under lock and key. <laughs> yeah, put him in the ice. Put that one on ice. <laughs> so what? How do we feel about Baki overall? Oh man, I. <laughs> you said you'd be interested in watching some more. I want to probably watch more. I, I want to see Pickle. I don't know if they'll ever get to him in the anime. But... Yeah, I just... I think that... Okay, my, my overall feeling is that this show is so dumb, but also, like, my, like mindless fun, if that makes <laughs> any sense. Just absolutely brain-dead entertainment. <laughs> um... I think I want to watch Shoujo Isekai. <laughs> you should. What? You should. Phil and S anime has converted me. Oh yeah. Well, maybe maybe you can at least watch the uh, boys love. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I what? do want to watch that. I will watch. Yes, I will watch yes. Baki through that lens. You will experience <laughs> Baki through that lens with the context of this first episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to, um, if you want to tell us which of the uh, Baki criminals is the most dateable, uh, you can do so at oneepisodecast at gmail.com. Don't 
you dare actually do that. <laughs> <laughs> if you, uh, that is one the word, not the number. Um, please. I do have to reiterate. Us... You are absolutely forbidden. <laughs> no, please do. Please <laughs> <laughs> tweet us at one episode cast. I am here for your Baki soft boy head cannons. Come on. <laughs> which one of these which one of these horrendous murderers is the softest boy? <laughs> God. Uh, I mean that I suppose that guy can, that one guy can give quite the blowjob. Stop. <laughs> we gotta end it there. We gotta end it there. <laughs> you gotta stop, huh? Up like a balloon. You don't think it's... you're gonna? Oh, good, and Infl- we're gonna get the inflation <laughs> fetishists into this one. Makes you big and round. Makes Blows you, big you up and to round. big and round. <laughs> <laughs>